Happy Thursday, everybody. Tom Leahy, uh, welcome to OptoMed Live. And we have a great subject today that we're going to talk about. I, you all know Amanda Team. She's Hello. part of our OptoMed family. But what you don't know is that Amanda has had a successful career um, as a pharmaceutical sales rep. And interesting enough, uh, when we go through this career and academic process with students, this is something that often uh, shows up in the array of jobs uh, that the assessment delivers. So I thought it might be a op great opportunity to dig a little deeper into what what it means to to have that sort of uh, sort of career. So thanks, Amanda, for being uh, willing to, to share your your story with with us today. Absolutely, Tom. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So. What is your, uh, how did you, how did you get into pharmaceutical sales? Let's start there. So here was my path into pharmaceutical sales. I had business to business sales experience. So I was in advertising sales first. Um, and so I was actually selling to local direct businesses and also to advertising agencies. And so because of that success in business to business sales, uh, when I decided to pursue pharmaceutical sales and start interviewing, that was um, basically how I broke into it is because of my business to business sales. Now, I also have um, a BS in marketing. Uh, and okay. so that was uh, my avenue is, you know, just the experience with marketing and then my, my business to business sales experience. Okay. So if we, we talk about, um, Oh, well, let me ask you this. Do you think this is something that um, uh, one would entertain coming directly out of, out of college? Well, I think that this industry and um, what companies are looking for uh, evolves, you know, from uh, the, you know, highly experienced to, you know, the candidate that's successful in other areas. And so, it's evolved into um, a place where I think that candidates can come right out of school. And the pharmaceutical companies and the medical companies, they do a lot of training within their company. So once you graduate from college with, let's say, your marketing degree and you start interviewing for pharmaceutical sales positions, you will go to training sometimes four to six weeks before you're actually out in the field working. So they have developed these really um, uh, unique and intense training processes that they go through to train you right. on the products not, that you'll be yeah. selling. Not just the product training, but also the sales training. Exactly, because basically, you know, you are going out and you are presenting marketing materials to providers, doctors, hospitals, hospital groups, individual physicians, you know, whatever your target physicians are, you're going out and you are uh, basically presenting the data and the research and, um, and the sales materials, the marketing materials. Well, that's a great segue to my next question. What does a day in the life of look like? What, what is your okay. day? So yeah. a day in the life of, so it depends on your territory. My territories have been very large, the whole state of Virginia, um, and some have been a little bit smaller, so the, the, you know, uh, a smaller area. So it just depends on your travel time. Uh, but you basically are responsible for, let's say, six to eight calls a day. So you have a specific routing and you are responsible for seeing um, your different accounts. And so it's a combination of keeping the accounts that you have and developing new business at the same time. So you have to have that balance. Um, so you make a lot of times, um, you know, you'll go in with an appointment. Sometimes you don't have an appointment. Sometimes you're just there to go in and figure out uh, what the physician is writing for their prescriptions while they're writing it, get some background information, get the best times and days to call on the account. Um, and so every day is different, which, you know, if you like that, then you might be a good candidate because every day is very different. And so you will be in your car driving to account 
to account and um, setting up appointments or getting to know the people in the office um, and developing relationships. So it sounds like this is something that you have to really be personally motivated to do. Absolutely. You have to definitely be um, self-motivated, organized, and you need to be able to approach your territory as if you're kind of running your own business. So that's one mm -hmm. of the things that is really important for people that are looking into this is you're not going to have um, someone scheduling things for you or the, the, the day is the same every day. You have the ability to pivot. Maybe you spend a little bit more time at one account, you know, that you had anticipated, um, but it might be worth it to get that face-to-face -face time with the people in the office and the physicians that you're calling on. And so, um, you know, you definitely have to be able to get up in the morning and get to your day and be very organized about it. And so it takes a high level of communication yeah. too. Yeah. Do you necessarily have to be a people person? Absolutely. Okay. I had the, the best advice I ever got from a district manager is um, on the first day, go out and make friends. Make friends with people in the office, make friends with key decision makers. And the only way that you can do that is to be personable um, and, and listen more than you talk and find out what's really important to people and get to know people. Yeah. I think that most of the very successful sales reps that I know are ones that, um, you know, can use their personality mm -hmm. and develop incredible relationships with people. So this is probably not something an introvert would want to take on. If you are someone that wants to be, you know, in an office, in a quiet space, doing your job all day by yourself, this is, this is not um, the choice for you. This would attract more of those people that find their energy from other people and find their energy through activity, through um, you know, because you're in and out of your car and in and out of your trunk with marketing materials. Maybe you carry samples. Maybe you need to have physicians sign off on your samples. And so there's, um, you know, just a lot of moving parts to this, mm -hmm. um, to this position. Right. So, you know, looking at, at your experience, um, what, what would you say would be, you know, uh, the one... Uh, positive or uh, what is the upside to this? What's the downside? To well, this? I think kind there's, of there's a lot of upside. Obviously, if you're in sales and marketing, then you're going to have earning potential. You're going to have your big salary plus your, your bonus structure. And so if that's what motivates you as a person is, you know, that carrot that, you know, um, trying to, to get to the different levels of your bonus, then, you know, that's a huge upside is, you know, just, um, it's very challenging. Every day is different. Um, once you're in this industry, um, it's a lot of, um, you're constantly being educated. You're constantly learning. There's constantly new research and new clinical trials that come out and you have to just kind of keep, learning, which I, I love. Um, the downside, sometimes the travel obviously can, can get to be a lot. You can get burned out if you um, are traveling a lot. And you definitely have to um, be able to put in some long days sometimes, you know. Um, yeah. uh, now, how do you compensate for that travel? I mean, obviously, you probably get find yourself getting burned out on the road so much. How do you keep yourself going, motivated? Well, for me, I think um, one of the ways that I keep myself motivated is just try to keep a good work-life balance. It's really hard to, I mean, there are times where I'm putting orders in at nine o'clock at night. Um, and so, you know, you're given a certain amount of paid time off and you need to use it because if, if not, you really could, can get burned out. So I make sure that um, I add in some um, of my paid time off days, just take a me day once in a while, get off the road, you know, kind of go do something that I like, or, you know, spend a little bit more time in the gym, whatever it is that you want to do. But um, it, there, there can be 
a burnout to this job because of the travel, because you are in your car traveling basically every day. Um, I can see. Yeah. So from a, um, an educational standpoint, a young person getting ready to go to college, thinking that this might be a direction they're going to go, you know, in terms of what to um, pursue in college in regard, I, I know you're talking about marketing. Mm -hmm. um, is that what you consider to be the, the best foundation for this or could they do, does it necessarily have to be that or is it, can you do this job if you have a, you know, a degree in history, but you have the personality um, and the desire to make it happen. Absolutely, Tom. I mean, I think that, um, you know, if you have a background in science and you just have a really outgoing personality, then those two can mesh well together. If you have a sales and marketing background, a communications background, um, even, you know, anything in health sciences, if you mesh that together, with good business acumen and organization and self-motivation. And you got to throw a little perseverance in there because you're going to hear no and you're going to hear it a lot, but you have to not let that keep you down. You hear no a lot. Yep. Yeah. You hear more <laughs> no's than you do yes's. So that makes the yes's yeah. even better. It, but, yeah, exactly. Um, you got to be resilient. Yeah. But I think right. every, every no, you get closer to the yes, right? Exactly. And you never know because one thing that's <laughs> great about the industry is it's constantly changing. If you don't like change, you probably should avoid this industry because it is constantly changing. Ah, I like um, that. So, I like that. Yeah. If you don't uh, like change, right. I think there's different paths that you can go, but the bottom line is if you are thinking about a career in pharmaceutical sales, make sure you have fantastic communication skills and presentation skills, because mm -hmm. that is really going to be the key to your success. And that, are the, you know, that's also something that you can look at taking right. classes, you know, in college as well. Yeah, so. sure. Great. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for that insight. Um, and, and uh, folks, listen, if you want to, um, you know, watch this video again, um, we are creating a library of, of these professional video interviews. Uh, you can get to them on our website um, under Career Spotlight. Um, there's a button there and, and that's where all these um, professional interviews are going to be located for you to access. So, you know, please feel free to, uh, to do that. And uh, with that, we'll let you get on with your day and uh, wish you a great weekend. And Amanda, thanks so much. Appreciate it. We'll talk Thank to you. Thank you. And Tom, I'm always willing to talk to students or anyone that is entertaining this area. I'm always um, willing to, to sit down and have a conversation and, and talk to someone. So reach out. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.